Hello! <laughs> um, okay, quick video about my accident on the Gib. So we left Aminji and we're on our way to Adcock Ad Gorge and we always ride five minutes um, apart so we're not eating dust. So I take off first and I'm um, up the Gib River, doing 75 kilometers an hour, zero traffic. We, we're blown away by how there's no traffic on there. So anyway, a car is coming the other way with a camper trailer. So I'm um, doing about 75 and so I pull over the shoulder because you're a big cloud of dust and you want to avoid it. As I pull over onto the shoulder, still doing that speed, I hit deep sand. Then the back wheel starts doing this and I'm like, whoa, and then the tank slap kicks in. And obviously the only way to get out of that is ah, get on it. So as I get on it, in the deep sand, there's these big mountainous corros and the back wheels loading, unloading, loading, unloading, and then uh, pitches sideways, slams me on the ground. I'm skidding down the gib on my back <laughs> like a ninja turtle. Thank God for the camel back and, and the Klim Artemis that I've been bagging the shit out of this whole time. So I'm skidding down on my back and I feel myself come away from the bike as I'm still skidding. Then I stop. Embrace. In, embrace, yeah. I'm laying on, laying on the ground like this. Like a ninja turtle on my back in a cloud of dust. An injured turtle. An injured turtle, injured ninja turtle. And, and I'm kind of thinking, what the hell just happened? And as I'm laying on my back, like trying to make sense of what just happened, suddenly I see Artemis. My bike can actually fly. So she's flying. And I'm thinking I'm having an illusion, maybe concussion. And she's getting closer. And then she comes in for the hug. Oh, lands on top of me. And all I remember seeing is the plastic from the um, spoke covers and my fabulous brand new Scorpion Extra front wheel. And it knocks the wind out of me and I'm <laughs> trying to get air in. Uh, that would have hurt, folks. Just a little bit. <laughs> and then, if that wasn't bad enough, like, because I have my hands like this and the bike's on top of me, I'm trying to lift it up and I can't get it off and I'm trying to get air in my lungs and trying to breathe. <laughs> And then, in the vision of my goggles, I see these two people. And they're lifting the bike off me going, oh my God, are you all right? And I'm going, I think so. I think that's what came out. I'm Neither sure. of them was me. I was still. Five minutes away. So they carefully sat me up. And as I sit up, then I see Mark riding in off the horizon. I'm like, is this just all a dream? Am I hallucinating? Anyway, so. So, tent. beautiful people, set up a deck chair, I got up off the ground, I thought that's it, my hips broken, my pelvis is broken, my kidneys bruised, my right arm, uh, left arm is sore, my wrists are sore, my neck sore. Um, they were kind enough to give me a lift back to Amici, 10 k's back up the road. Amici. Amici. And then Mark followed us with his bike and then they gave him a lift back to go and get my bike. So, at Amici, Amici, um, we met the beautiful owner, Colin Fitzgerald, and he said, oh, you can have the guest um, house stay as long as you want. And as it turns out, 
you know, 30 years ago or 40 years ago in the 80s, he was WA's Evil Knievel who jumped the Swan River on his bike. I was <laughs> like, how freaky, the people that Here's we met. Here's the at the gravity of the situation, folks. I saw the skid afterwards. I didn't see the crash, but Rosie was doing 65, 70, and there's this big fishy, 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 and then the fishy stops, and there's a sort of pile of hole in the dirt sort of a few metres away, so he just snaked it, went head first down the road at 65, and the bike's cartwheeled and landed on top of it. Like, so this is serious shit, and, the, you know, like, she's a tough little bugger. I tell you what, I had to really just keep insisting that she tell me if she was going to die or not, and she didn't, as you can see now. But at times, she just wouldn't sort of, the pain was sort of fighting with the adrenaline and I couldn't get her to tell me whether she was going to die or not, but she did. Just wanted to say that. I did my best to make sure that we got this far. <laughs> so the next five days, we sort of kind of did 50 k's to the next gorge and then I'd have to stay two days because I was in agony. And then finally the beautiful nurse from the Royal Flying Doctor came out and gave me deep heat and double dose of ibuprofen and anyway so sort of five days a bag later. of fucking toiletries oh, no, it was amazing i got shampoo and soap and conditioner mary jane she was amazing and the people at mount hart chantel and patrice he was an amazing chef so i was eating scotch fillet and and these beautiful campers that were coming in were going oh would you like a glass of red wine with that i'm going ah this is amazing i can't believe it so we met all these incredible people through it. I survived. I'm still battered and bruised. We're laughing. We're in Kananara right now. I've got to go find a masseuse. And anyway, so long story short, the adventure continues and I'm alive. And uh, yeah, it was a big learning curve. Awesome adventure. Feel fresh. <laughs> we just pulled up at the Mount Manning Camp Park for the Manning Gorge. You know, they would be easily 100 foot tall. Just stunning. So you can basically camp anywhere along the river, along the fire. Whoop, whoop. She's got him, she's got him, he's dead.
boring how. Yeah, little little creeks and rivers and watering holes. You'd be surprised to think we're moving up to the dry part of the Kimberley. See these wild roses. Apparently you can turn these into jam or um, sort of marinate them and use them in gin and stuff like that. They're just so, so, so beautiful. And there goes our beautiful German friends in their big Mercedes 4x4 with a little TT on the back and we keep crossing paths with them and they're just the most delightful Germans <laughs> These are all brand new, so free washing machine, all the tap water's drinkable, up the toilets, the laundry, big spacious showers with great hot water. So very rare to come across a complex that is so well fit out. This little baby out looks nice and timid, just a little scream, just a little scream. And whee, over we go. Double four down to a beautiful pool in the Mallet Gorge. That's a friend base. I actually just came for a walk to stretch my legs to the little creek crossing here. And this is the real full on sandy way that you go to the, the big gorge where Mark went for a second ride today. Can't really see because of the shadows, but I think perfect timing, I actually hear him coming back. So, hey, here he is. Here he is. Hey. Yeah, walk in the park for him. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, look, look how deep this is. Huge. 